Congressman Adam Schiff making some news over the weekend saying uh, he's willing to call Robert Mueller to testify before Congress and ultimately subpoena his report. Uh, I think two parts to this. One, can he legally do that? And B, uh, is this more or is this political posturing on his part to put pressure on William Barr to release as much of this report as possible? Uh, yes, number one, he can absolutely do that. And two, I'm sure that, that he's doing what members of Congress often do with respect to the Justice Department, which is make it clear if you don't turn these documents over, you can expect a subpoena, you can expect a court fight. And the history here, Garrett referred to some of it, is very much on Congress's side. Look, over the past couple of years, one thing the Justice Department has made clear is that it is not the arbiter of presidential misconduct. They've made clear that they can't indict a sitting president, that it's Congress's job to police the, uh, a president's conduct. And so the only way Congress can do that is if they have access to not just Mueller's report, but if they have access to documents. And as Garrett noted, the precedent has all, is all on Congress's side. There aren't really actually any rules governing what is turned over to Congress. There's some case law, but there's nothing written down in regulation or statute anywhere. And over the past few years, Congress, Republican Congress, has repeatedly demanded that DOJ turn over documents related to the Russia investigation and especially related to the, the Clinton investigation. And they ended up getting them, sometimes got them because the president of the United States, President Trump, insisted on them. So there's a little bit of a, an aspect of them being hoisted on their own petard here that you might see in the coming months. And, and that raises a really interesting question, Joyce, about what this means for the general public. In fact, the former uh, acting solicitor general, Neil Katyal, helped write the special counsel regulations uh, way back in 1999. In fact, I want to uh, play you what he told Chuck Todd on Meet the Press yesterday about his intent writing those regulations. The idea was there was going to be law enforcement sensitive material in there, and in general you wanted that report to be confidential. However, when you're dealing with wrong, potential wrongdoing by the President of the United States, if Mueller finds information out that says this, absolutely the Attorney General here, Barr, has the discretion to turn that report over to Congress, and indeed he has to. The overall intent of the regulations, it's said time and time again, mm -hmm. is public confidence in the administration of justice, and any sort of suppressed report about presidential wrongdoing yeah. will flunk that test. So I guess the question, Joyce, becomes how do you reconcile those two uh, words that he used there? The discretion that uh, William Barr will have uh, and then ultimately whether or not this is in the public interest. There's no doubt that the broad public disclosure of Mueller's findings is in the public interest. I think the more subtle question that you're asking here is what exactly is Mueller likely to disclose? There's one version of this memo where it's simply a recounting of his prosecutive decision making. That means who did I decide to indict? Who did I not decide to indict? And it could be as simple as that sort of a list. What we don't know is whether Mueller will have this broader analysis that says, I had no option of indicting the president because of DOJ policy, but if I had had that option, here are the evidence, pieces of evidence and charges that I might have considered. No matter what form this document takes, it needs to be disclosed. And I think Matt is, is wise when he talks about the fact that Congress coming out early and saying that they'll seek this report, it not only gives DOJ sort of a little push to release, it also gives them cover for doing so if it's ultimately going to be disclosed. All right, so that's a great uh, teeing off point for the question for you, Danny, which is Adam Schiff making these comments over the weekends about possibly even suing the administration to ensure this document gets released. Uh, what do you make of those comments in relation to what Joyce just said, that it works both ways? It gives some push to the Department of Justice, but it also could give them some cover. Since the early days of the Republic, Congress has had the power to investigate the executive branch through subpoenas both for documents and for testimony. But it's less clear that the legislative branch can sue the executive branch in court. Congress may or may not have standing to file a lawsuit in a case like this. And the idea is traditionally uh, under a, a, a policy called um, uh, uh, it would help me. I'm, it's, I'm forgetting it for a second here. It's a, it's a non-justiciable political question, mm -hmm. which says that uh, certain issues are left exclusively to the determination within the executive branch. And the idea is that if Congress simply doesn't like the way the executive branch is enforcing its own law, it can't just rush to court every time and sue the executive branch. The executive branch, like all branches, has to be able to run its own actions, policy internally without interference and being sued in the courts every single time. So while Congress can issue subpoenas for testimony and documents, 
it is not as certain that they can sue the executive branch for its enforcement of the law. Uh, Matt, let me get your thoughts on a word that Garrett also talked about, the I word, possibly uh, impeachment. If, as some have suggested, that the president can only be impeached, not indicted while he's in office, although the law is still, uh, still ill-defined on that, doesn't Congress have to see all of Mueller's findings in order to determine what they should and can do next? I think that's exactly right. Look, if, if the, the theory behind DOJ's opinion, and we've heard a lot about this opinion, is that the president can't be indicted and the only way to, to police presidential misconduct is for Congress to, to do that, then Congress has to access, have access to all the information they need to make an informed decision. Now, that doesn't mean they need to rush into impeachment. That doesn't mean, need to, need to mean they need to start impeachment hearings the moment this report is delivered. What it means is they need to be able to conduct their own full investigation to look at all the facts that Bob Mueller has gathered, gathered be able to, to interview all the witnesses that he's talked to. It means people like Michael Flynn, uh, people, you know, people like Michael Cohen, who we'll see this week, people like Rick Gates, who's still cooperating, need to be able to come up to Congress and testify. And, they, and, and uh, Congress needs to have access to material. And I think that even includes grand jury material. It means they probably need to go to a federal judge and get permission to see what the grand jury's seen so they can make a full decision uh, whether they believe the president's conduct rises to the standard of high crimes and misdemeanors or not. Uh, Joyce, let me get your thoughts on the big testimony this week. Michael Cohen, he's got three, uh, both to the Senate and House Intel Committees, plus the Oversight Committee, which is the only one that will be public. He already lied to Congress uh, once. Does that mean the testimony this week is automatically tainted? So that's Cohen's biggest challenge, convincing people that he's now telling the truth when he's in fact been convicted, pleaded guilty to lying to Congress but, but look, Eamon, this is a fight that I always relished as a prosecutor because cooperating witnesses, they're never picked by the government. They're always picked by the defendant, or in this case, by President Trump, who chose Michael Cohen to be his, his lawyer. So Cohen has access to a great deal of information. The question is, is he now willing to tell the truth about it? And the only good outcome here for Michael Cohen is if he does tell the truth. There are people who can hold him accountable if he lies. That means he could go to, to prison for a longer period of time. But Cohen's only path forward is telling the truth. If he does that, prosecutors in the Southern District of New York could even choose to ask for an additional reduction in his sentence. Mm. So if he goes in with documents and evidence to back up the, the testimony that he now gives, the circumstantial guarantees of his, his honesty and his truthfulness here will be very compelling. I yeah, think. it'll certainly be a performance to watch. Uh, Danny, final question to you. What are you watching for in Michael Cohen's testimony this week? We already got a sense of some of the topics he's supposed to discuss, but what jumps out at you? Last summer, Michael Cohen stood in federal court and essentially accused the president of conspiring with Cohen to make illegal campaign finance law payments. So my answer is not exciting. It doesn't go to Russia collusion. It doesn't go to the potential Pandora's box of things that Michael Cohen knows that we don't know yet about Trump's personal finances and business dealings. But it is the safe money because last summer, Michael Cohen implicated the president in a crime. And we know it's a crime because Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to it. So we know the government cares about campaign finance law as a crime. So that the safe money, the easy bet is going to be the most compelling evidence. Maybe that. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.